Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on Forgotten Weapons. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale here in the September of 2015 premiere auction. One that I found down in the handgun racks is this, which doesn't really look like a handgun yet. This is actually a shoulder stock, of course. I figure most folks are probably familiar with the broom handle Mausers that uh, came with their wooden holster stocks. There are some other guns that you know, the same thing was done with. Um, probably the next most common one is the Browning High Power. Uh, the Chinese bought a whole bunch of those from Canada during World War II. High Power is equipped with wooden holster stocks. Well, this one is slightly less common, at least to be found in this sort of combination. This is an FN model 1903. Uh, so you may be familiar with the Browning slash Colt Model 1903, the pocket hammerless. That gun is basically a smaller version of this one. So the, the pocket hammerless was made in 380 and 32. This was an attempt at a military style version uh, in the 9 by 20 millimeter cartridge or 9 millimeter Browning long. A uh, bit more powerful. Now here in the US, most of the ones of these that we see are Swedish. Um, the Swedes bought them from FN. And they, they bought something like 10,000 of them. And a lot of the ones that have come back into the country after they were surplused by the Swedes have been actually rebarreled for the 380 cartridge, which is easier to find. Uh, this one, however, is not Swedish. This is from the Russian contract for these guns. And the Russian contract included holster stocks. So there are a couple neat features to this one in particular. Let me bring the camera back here. I'll show you how these attach and the extended magazine. Now, typically, guns that are set up like this have a slot in the back strap of the frame. Well, this model, the, both the, the Colt 1903 and the FN 1903, both have grip safeties. So you can't really put a slot back there because, well, the grip safety's in the way. So I should, we'll give you a quick look in there. We've got a slot for the gun, got a spare magazine, which we'll look at in a moment, and a cleaning rod. And then, of course, this snaps back shut. The hole is for the grip of the gun. Now, because we do not have a slot in the back strap of the gun, the way this attaches is with a pair of rails that are cut into the very bottom of the frame, right down here. And those slide into a matching pair of slots right here in the stock. Now the problem is the nose of this magazine gets in the way. So what we have to do is take the magazine out. This is the standard, I believe, seven round magazine for these. Then we can line up the pistol right here. We have a little spring-loaded latch. That snaps into place. Now we have our pistol effectively on the shoulder stock. The problem is magazine doesn't fit, right? Well, that is where the spare magazine in the buttstock comes in handy. This is an extended 10 round magazine. And you will notice there is an extra magazine release on the bottom of the stock. So when I have the stock on the gun, I can insert the 10 round magazine which goes through the stock and through the pistol. And in fact, it helps hold the pistol onto the stock. Now I've got 10 rounds at my disposal and I can change that magazine without having to take the stock off. Now that does lead to a few potential issues if I'm carrying the gun with this. The presumption is I will either draw the pistol and use it just as a pistol, or I will have enough time to draw the pistol, change the magazines, and then attach the shoulder stock. So, uh, and frankly, I don't think that's a terrible setup. Uh, the idea of these is that you have a sidearm fairly easily accessible on your belt should you need it. And if you're in a situation that calls for a bit of a longer shot, where you know, presumably you'd probably have a little bit more notice, more time to get ready. Then you can attach the stock and have effectively a small carbine. Um, having shot some of these, I haven't shot one of the 1903s, but other stocked pistols, I find that, yeah, the shoulder stock really does make a significant improvement in potential accuracy. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I always get a kick looking at these shoulder stocked pistols. I think it's a really cool concept and it's really too bad that the National Firearms Act kind of quashed development of this in the United States. Now, this particular 
setup, as with many of the early guns built this way, has been specifically exempted from the NFA. So this is not legally a short-barreled rifle, it's just a pistol on the Curio and Relic list. If you'd like to have it yourself, try out one of these, because really, they're pretty cool. I think there's a lot of, of validity in this concept. Well, if you check the link in the text below, that'll take you to Rock Island's catalog page for this particular one. You can check out their pictures, create an account online, and uh, place a bid, add it to your own collection. Thanks for watching.